welcome to True Crime Review. An unflinching gaze into the depths of human depravity. The podcast covers current crime news, updates on cold cases and resources for research and investigation. True Crime Review often discusses disturbing and violent crimes, so listener discretion is advised. She was remarkable. I talked to her today uh, because when I heard uh, the 911 call and um, you know read the, the sequence of events, I thought, here's somebody who's not just courage uh, and not just cool under pressure, uh, but also uh, had enough heart that somehow she could convince somebody that was really troubled that she cared about them. And, uh, you know, I I told her, I said, uh, that not only did she make Michelle and and, and me proud, but she probably saved a lot of lives, uh, including uh, the life of uh, uh, the potential perpetrator. On August 20th, 2013, a shooting and hostage situation occurred at Ronald E. McNair Discovery Learning Academy, an elementary school in Decatur, Georgia. A man with an AK-47 entered the school's front office and barricaded himself. He fired six shots at approaching police officers outside, who returned fire. Nobody was injured. The school's students were evacuated. Antoinette Huff, a school bookkeeper, later received a call from President Obama praising her for her courage while talking to the shooter. Police credited her calmness and kindness toward him with convincing him to surrender without shooting anyone. The incident sent more than 800 elementary students, teachers and staffers scrambling for safety at the Ronald McNair Discovery Learning Academy in Decatur, Georgia. Sources say the 19-year-old gunman entered the school and then briefly exited at least twice to fire shots into the air. Police say during his time in the building, the gunman ordered a school secretary to call Atlanta television station WSB. Station employee Lacey Leacroy answered that call. the, The front desk had called ahead to say, I'm transferring someone and she says she's in a school office um, with a gunman. I asked her why um, he wanted, and he said um, he wanted us to start filming as police die. It's a feeling you can't describe. Unless you have kids, you can't describe it. It, it. it don't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. I got there um, late because um, I was actually, you know, meant to, the, the news that I got was devastating. And um, I know God had me to be late to get that news and to um, put all that aside that I just got to be able to help that young man. As I'm on my way to work, I'm in my car. My husband, after 33 years, left me for another woman. I had been with him since I was 13 years old. I didn't know how to survive without him. You see, he was every breath that I took every morning. So as I'm on my way, with tears streaming down my face, I get to my desk, and the principal asks me if I could fill in for the secretary. But as I'm sitting there, I get a phone call. And the phone call is the bank, wanting $14,000 in seven days. So as I'm sitting there with tears running down my face again, I get another phone call. It was the secretary wanting to know where was I because I was supposed to be at the front office and back at my desk by now. As I wipe my tears from my eyes, I opened the door, and it's a teacher, wanted me to help her with her paperwork. So as we go to the front office, and we sit at the desk, moments later, Michael Hill, 
came in the office threatening to kill me, over 870 students, teachers, and parents with his AK-47 and over 500 rounds of ammunition. As I sit there, wanting to know, this has got to be a joke. Got to be a joke. I had never seen a gun in my life, didn't know what bullets looked like, and he comes in already armed, ready to steal, kill, and destroy. As the teacher looks at me, I look at her, and we really just want to run. But he says to her, go and let everyone know that I am in the building. Should I go or should I stay? I let her know to go. Do exactly what he says. And as she leaves, I'm in the room with the gunman all by myself. I was a gunman's story on that fateful day in August. I was the same as he was. I was depressed, angry, overwhelmed. It was scary because I knew that at that moment, he was ready to take my life along with his. And if I didn't say the right thing, that we all would be dead. Okay, a police addressing your emergency. Yes, ma'am. I'm on Second Avenue in the school, and the gentleman said, "Tell them to hold down the police officer coming." And he said he's gonna start shooting, so tell them to back off. Okay, one moment. Do not let anybody in the building, including the police. Do not let anybody in the building, including the police. Okay, stay on the line with me, ma'am. Where are you? I'm in the front office. Oh, he just went outside and started shooting. Okay. Oh, can I run? Where do you, can you get somewhere safe? Yeah, I gotta go. No, he gonna see me running and call me back. Oh, hold on. Put the oh, phone down. Bye. Okay, she said that she's, she's getting the police now to tell him to back off for you, okay? Okay, okay. Stop all movement now on the ground. Stop all movement on the ground. If it's not an emergency, please do not use the radio. If it's not an emergency, do not use the radio. Are you talking to the shooter? That's what he's telling me to tell them on the radio. Okay. Now, what did you want me to tell her, sir? Okay, he told me, put your home, call the news, ma'am. Okay. What you want me to tell? You want me to, I'm trying to find the number for China, too. Okay, you want me to tell them to come up? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Police? Yes, ma'am. He said, tell them to back up right now. Okay. Okay, hold on. Okay. Hello? Ma'am? Okay. He said, he said to tell them to back off. He doesn't want the kids. He wants the police. So back off and, um, and what else, sir? He said he don't care if he dies. He don't have nothing to live for. And he said he's not mentally stable. Okay, stay on the line with me, okay? Put the phone down if you have to, but don't put it on hold so I can't hear. Okay. Can you tell me where you are? In the front office with him. Okay. She said, he said, send in one of your radios with an unarmed officer. Okay. 
she said, okay, she's getting ready to tell them. Or some way that he, he can talk to the police. He said, but if they come armed, he's going to start shooting again. Okay. Only one officer. Okay. She said, he said, if you have to go ahead and evacuate them homes right there in the front of the building. Okay. Okay. Ask him, is he willing to give his name? She said, are you willing to give your name? He said, no. Okay. He said, no, he, know, he, he knows that if he gives his name, he's going away for a long time. He said, you know, he's going away for a long time. He's on probation. Tell them to stand down now. Okay. Tell them to stand down now, he said. Okay, tell them I'm giving the instructions. She said she's giving the instructions. She, he said that he should just shoot himself. He said, he said call the probation office in DeKalb County and let them know what's going on. Okay. And who are we asking for? He said, she said, who is she asking for? He said he think it's Officer Scott. Okay. Okay. You want me to let them let her get by? This is the emergency. Yes. Hello? Yes. Yes, I'm here. You want me to tell her to let that let her come, sir? She sounds like she loves you a lot. You're on the phone with a relative? Yes. Yeah. What'd you say, sir? He what shoot? He said he should have just went to the mental hospital instead of doing this because he's not on his medication. Okay. But do you, do you want me to try? I can help you. You want me to try? You want me to, you want to talk to them? Want me to talk to them and try to? Okay, well, let me talk to them and let, let's see if we can work it out so that you don't have to go away with them for a long time. No, it does matter. I can let them know that you have not tried to harm me or do anything with me or anything if you want to. But that doesn't make any difference. You didn't hit anybody. So, okay, let me ask you this, ma'am. He didn't hit anybody. He just shot outside the door. If I walk out there with him, if I walk out there with him they, so they won't shoot him or anything like that, he wants to give himself up, is that okay? And they won't shoot him? Yes, ma'am. And he said he just want to go to the hospital? Okay. She Tell said, him, hold on one moment. Okay. okay, she said, hold on, and we going, she's going to talk to the police officer, and I'll go out there with you. Well, don't feel bad, baby. My husband just left me after 33 years. But, yes, you do. I mean, I'm sitting here with you and talking to, talking to you about it. I got a son that's multiple disabled. Let me, let, can I speak to her? He's let, me talk, let me talk to her to let her know that I'm going to go with you. You want me to talk to her? No, you didn't, baby. It's, it's all going to be well. The lady's going to talk to the police. Okay. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on a second, okay? Uh-huh, don't, don't hang up the phone. Okay, hold on, he wants me to go over here to the intercom, so hold on for me, okay? Okay, Okay, wait a minute. So can you talk to the police and let them know that I'm going to walk out there with him and he wants to give himself up? Okay, I am. Let me get an okay from them, okay? Okay, and what are you, and you let me know what we need to do. He wants me to go on the intercom and let everybody know that he's sorry, okay? Okay. Okay, hold on. It's okay. <laughs> Everybody, this is a, this is still a continuous lockdown. The government wants to let everybody know that he is sorry. He does not want to harm anybody. Everybody stay in place until the lockdown is over with.
Okay. You want me to leave it? You want me to leave it? leave it right here? Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, he's going to come on now, but he he wants to know what do you want him to do with the gun? Okay. If they, if, or, or you want to send a, pol a police officer in? And he said he'll be on the ground with his hands behind his back, and I'll take the gun from him and put it over here on the other side by me. Okay, one more. Okay. Put here, put all that over here so that way they won't see it, okay? Come over here and put it over here on this. Okay. Put it all up there, okay. He's put the weapons down? Yeah. So hold on before you come. He's putting everything down. Okay. So and he's going to get on the floor, so tell him to hold on a minute. So let him get everything together. He's getting it all together. Okay. Tell me when you're ready, and then I tell him to come on in. Okay, he wants to drink his bottle of water, so let him drink his... Let, let him get it together. He's... Okay. Okay. Did you want me to call somebody to talk to somebody for you? Okay. We're not going to hate you, baby. It's a good thing that, you, that you've given up, so we're not going to hate you. Okay. Ma'am, you're doing a great job. So let's do it before the helicopters and stuff like that come. So they hear you hear them? Okay. So would you want to go ahead and want me to tell them to come on in now? Okay. He's getting everything out of his pockets now. Okay. Okay. He said the gun may come back and say it's stolen, but it's not. He knows the whole story about the gun, and he'll let you all know that. Okay. Do y'all want him to take his belt off? That's fine. Just take all his weapons off. Okay, she said that's fine. Take all your weapons off. Your, he, she said you don't have no more weapons. Okay. Okay. So you going? Okay, he on the ground now with his hands behind the back. Tell the officers don't come in with any gun. No, come in shooting or anything, so they can come on in, and I'll buzz them in. Okay. So hold on, just sit right there, and I'ma buzz them in. Okay, so you'll know when they coming. Okay. Okay. So just stay there calm. Don't worry about it. I'm going to sit right here so they'll see that you try not to harm me, okay? Okay. Okay. It's going to be all right, sweet. I just want you to know that I love you, though, okay? And I'm proud of you. That's a good thing that you just giving up, and don't worry about it. We all go through something in life. No, you don't want that. You're going to be okay. I thought the same thing. You know, I tried to commit suicide last year after my husband left me. But look at me now. I'm still working and everything is okay. Your name is Michael what? Michael Hill? When the weather not in the harbor? The people came from Inner Harbor and planted a gun? Or the drums from Inner Harbor? Oh, okay, so you came with the kids that play the drums for the Inner Harbor? Oh, for Red Ribbon Week, so you was actually in there doing all of that with them? Oh, how awesome. So that means, I, I seen, so that means I've seen you before then. Oh, okay. Y'all play them drums and stuff real good. Okay, he said that they can come on in now, and he needs to go to the hospital. Okay. And he doesn't have any weapons on him or anything like that. He's laying on the floor, and he doesn't have any weapons, and he's got everything out of his pocket. There, there's no, um, he, he, only thing he has on his belt, everything is out of his pocket. Everything is sitting here on the counter. So all we need to do is, is they can just come and I'm going to buzz them in so he'll know that they're here and everything, and they can come on in and get him and take him to the hospital. Okay, one moment. Okay. Yeah, she says she's going to let them know. She's talking to them now to let them know to come on in and to take you to the hospital, okay? No, you stay right there. You fine. He said, do you want him to go right there with his hands up or you want him I to want stay right here? Stay right where he is. Okay, she said stay right there where you are. Guess what? Um, can, he wants to know, can he get some of his water right quick? Yes, uh, yes Michael. You said Michael Hill, right? Yes. Okay. Guess what, Michael? My last name is Hill, too. You know, my mom was a Hill. 
He said, what are y'all waiting for? What's taking them so long to come on? Okay, one moment. She said she's getting to them now. They're coming. They're coming. So just hold on, Michael. Go ahead and lay down. So they go, go ahead and lay down. Take, don't put your phone. Okay, you just got your phone? Okay, that's fine. Tell them to come on. Come on. Okay, he just got his phone. That's all he got is his phone. It's just him. Okay, it's just him. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes. I'm telling you something, baby. I ain't never been so scared all the days of my life. Me either. But you did great. Woo, Jesus. This morning, the man accused of shooting up the school has a face and a name. ABC News has learned he's Michael Brandon Hill, a 20-year-old with a history of mental health issues. Police say the young man followed someone through the doors of Atlanta's Ronald E. McNair Academy, where over 800 children were attending pre-K through fifth grade. Overnight, in an exclusive interview, Hill's brother told us he was a ticking time bomb. I had a feeling he was going to eventually one day do something stupid but not this magnitude he told us his brother's pharmacy his brother's medicine cabinet looked like a pharmacy and that he got into trouble young first stealing from schools and then breaking into churches ray davis is the case's lead detective he had approximately 400 approximately 500 rounds of ammo with him so how did hill a convicted felon get his hands on this AK? He obtained the weapon, we believe, from an acquaintance. The acquaintance gave him the gun or he took the gun? We can't release everything at this point, but we believe he obtained it from the house of an acquaintance. Davis would not elaborate on Hill's motive, but Hill's brother told us the suspect is bipolar and schizophrenic and has tried to kill himself several times. In June of 2009, he admitted setting his parents' house on fire. Michael Hill tried to commit suicide as early as 11 years old, according to his lawyer. He didn't want to go to trial, but instead took a plea deal from the state. I will sentence you to 40 years to serve 20, with credit for time served. Do you still feel sorry for this man? I really do. I would like to go back and visit him. You would like to maintain contact with him? Yeah, I would. I would like to go back and and, and contact him and just see how he's doing. I mean, not in the relationship there, because I know that it's beyond what he sees. He, he's, a hurting, he, he's a hurting soul. And so if any kind of way that I can help him and, and allow him to get on the right path, we all go through something. And I believe that God gives us all a purpose in life. And I believe he has a purpose and destiny for that young man also. All right, thank you very much for listening to this episode of True Crime Review. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at True Crime Review, on Reddit at r slash True Crime Review, and on Twitter at True Crime REV. Go to truecrimereview.net slash subscribe to subscribe and get all of our new episodes when they're released. Please, if you're an iTunes user, also leave a review if you like the podcast because reviews will help us move up the charts and by moving up the charts we will get more listeners the theme music is our planet is lost by entropy audio you can find more at entropyaudio.bandcamp.com this is your host joe signing off of this episode of true crime review until next time remember families deserve truth and victims deserve voices yeah.